Good to see each one of you. How about this for a fall day, huh? Nice, nice, nice. Good to see each one of you that's made your way to the house of the Lord today. Uh, we're going to get moving real quick as and because, uh, oh, my lands. And make sure, make sure you grab a bulletin on your way out because there are there are lots of things. And we're not going to get into announcing all of them because, like Brother Dwayne said, we'd probably be here. All, we'd, we'd get into Brother Lee's time for sure. So, uh, But I will say this. You've been praying for it, and I hope you continue keep, to keep praying for this. A week from today starts our revival services down here at Macedonia. That's a week from today. Isn't that crazy? But uh, be in prayer. Uh, be planning to attend. Next Sunday morning, we're going to have Brother Adam Ash, and Sunday night will be Brother James Grimes. Uh, I'll be preaching on Monday, Jerry Nickel on Tuesday, and Brother Lee will be wrapping it up on Wednesday. Uh, but make plans to attend every service, because uh, I know you're going to miss something amazing in every single service that the Lord is going to share. So plan to attend if you can. Uh, invite others to come as well. Uh, let's fill this house for the Lord and uh, uh, see what the good Lord's got in store for us, okay? So plan to attend. Be in prayer for that. That's a week from today, October 22nd. At the end of October, the 29th, there will be a wedding shower for, for Heath and uh, Courtney uh, after the evening service, uh, and it shows there where uh, they are, are registered. Uh, if you flip to the back of your bulletin, November exploded. That's what happened. Uh, and so uh, you can go through there. There's trunk or treats. Uh, November 5th, there's going to be a special service. I don't know that anything, I don't know that... It's, I feel weird, me, me announcing this, but uh, November 5th, there is uh, going to be a special service with Brother Jess Cole and Brother Lee Neal preaching um, about Brother Jess Cole potentially becoming the pastor of this church. So uh, that's, that feels weird saying that, but uh, okay, and uh, uh, be in prayer for that, and um, that's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, that night, we start revival services at Gunner. I'll be preaching a revival uh, there starting that Sunday night through Wednesday, um, and we'll be dismissing um, Sunday night to go there as well. Missionary services, uh, I'll, I'll pinpoint the November 11th. That's what you're signing up for is that sign-up sheet for the Esther going to watch Esther as a church. Uh, group together. There's a bus, right, that we've, we're going to have reserved. 57, right, is the number. 56. Uh, and if we get more than that, I'm sure we, we can have some volunteers to drive to make sure everybody gets a bus ride there. Uh, but that's going to be a great time uh, as, as a church body to go be a part of uh, that play down there at Branson at the Esther, at the Sight and Sound Theater. That's November 11th. But you have to sign up today. It's, I know it's kind of short notice. November 11th is a long ways away. But guess what? People, other people want to go watch that show. And the seats are filling up. And so we got to get our reservations in as early as we possibly can. So uh, make sure if you can be there uh, to sign up as well. Uh, we're going to stop there. There's other, there's other events for sure. Uh, but make sure you grab a bulletin uh, and, uh, and that you're uh, in the know. Uh, as far as prayer requests go, it is good to see Brother Jeff here this morning. Good to have you with us. And hope you continue to, to get mended up and get, get, 
get get everything straightened out and get your heart pumping and working in the right manner. But uh, it's good to have. Continue to remember Brother Jeff in prayer. Uh, continue to remember Sue that she deals with all all these crazy boys in her life, and Brother Norm in Spain. Keep remembering him in prayer. Uh, as well, I gotta say that it is not cancer on Good. his chest or his lungs because it, I didn't see him yet, but it's not cancer there. Oh, so. praise God. Norman does not, it's not showing cancer in any of the things that's come back and, and the scans that they've done. So that's a praise for sure, but continue to remember, remember him in prayer. Uh, uh, we've, we've got continue to remember Rex and Sharon um, day by day, just continue to, to pray for their strength. And uh, healing uh, with Brother Rex. Uh, continue to remember uh, Brother Lee and, Dar and Sister Darlene day by day. Continue to remember them as well. I'm just reading through the list here. Good to have Brother Ken Dodson with us today. You're going to continue to be in our prayers, uh, you and Paula. And uh, Gaylene Cook, uh, Brother Rick's aunt. How, how is Rick doing? He was pretty cruddy Wednesday night, so continue to remember him as well. And uh, lot, lots of lots of needs. Continue to remember Dora Cisco as she recovers from that broken hip. Uh, we've got Robbie Moody and his, uh, his the Crohn's that he's fighting. Good to have Laverne here with us today. And uh, we're going to continue to pray for him each, each day. Shelba Parker's on here. No doubt the list goes on and on and on in your own life. I know you've got, there's a lot. There's a lot going on, a lot of uh, needs for prayer. Uh, and as far as the world goes, remember Israel, right? Remember them in prayer. Continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and uh, all the families that are hurt. No doubt we've all got some connection there for sure, but it's God's people. And we're going to pray for them. It's their land, and we're going to keep lifting them up in prayer, okay? Any others this morning before we go to the Lord in prayer? Tammy, yeah, Tammy and Randy, they're, they're working for the next her next occupation place to work and she's got two interviews and are they close can you say uh, one's in monette good we'll pray for that one in monette won't we <laughs> uh, but pray for them I'm, I'm joking but pray for them and what's what the lord's got for them his plans so anything else all right Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Laverne, would you lead us in prayer this morning? Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Ooh. Brother Lee handed me a thank you card, and I'd be remiss if I didn't read it. Let me read this real quick. Sorry. Sorry to put the whole. Our church family, uh, the world's a whole lot better place because of you like, uh, like you who bring so much happiness, the nice things that they do. And with your recent thoughtfulness still very much in mind, this is meant uh, to bring a thank you of the very warmest kind. And that's from uh, Brother uh, uh, Rex and Sister Sharon. Is Am I supposed to read this note here as well? I should have pre-read this. Uh, dear church family, uh, we're all writing this uh, with thankful hearts to all our church family. Thankful uh, for all the prayers that you have sent to, to God's throne on our behalf. Thankful for all the sympathy cards for the uh, for the loss of my brother Lynn and for all the get well and encouragement cards for Rex's healing and the anniversary cards for our 60th wedding anniversary. Also, we will uh, also we were blessed with a um, flower and a basket of goodies. We are still praying for God's will to be done in our lives. You all have been so faithful and we love you and pray that God will bless each one of you. That's with love from Brother Rex and uh, Sister Sharon. So again, continue to remember them in prayer for sure. All right. Brother Laverne, he's bringing a mic to you. But you lead us in prayer this morning. This morning again. And, and Amy Chief, thank you for the day that you have given us here, Father. We'd ask you, Lord, to bless them. The events here at this church may they be renowned to your glory and to your honor father and may you be lifted up to a lost and dying world we pray this morning father for the turmoil that goes on in our world today for israel for uranium and all the other people father and the people that are suffering today and, and for through physical things thirst and and hunger father we know that you're mindful of these things and but you've said to pray one for another and, 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 and to be 
honest and be be burdened about other people's uh, other turmoils. Father, we thank you for Sharon and Lauren and what or Sharon and and Rex as they as uh, they do in our turmoil and and Eldon and Carolyn, Father, and we pray for all these people, Master, too numerous to number, but. We know in your heart and on your mind, Lord, that there's nothing escaped you, that all things are in your hand, and let everything be in this world done to your glory. Let all things work together with them that love you and would praise you. We thank you for our salvation that you've given to the cross and for the suffering and for the blood that, that you did give for our redemption. Father, we have, we'd ask you, Lord, if there's one here this morning, it stands in need of prayer, Lord, that this might be the day that they would come to you and be relieved of, the, of all, all of their burdens, Master. And we pray for, the, for Lee this morning as he brings a message. We pray for the singers. We pray for the musicians. We thank you for all these people, Father, that you have provided for us. Help us to be in your will and in your care and in your keeping. So many things, Father, that we could... Would, we could uh, I bring before the throne this morning that time would reveal, would uh, keep us from those things. But we just want to know, Lord, that we love and worship you. And without you, we are nothing. And without the Holy Spirit, we, we, have, no, we have no meaning, Father. But let the Holy Spirit fall upon the, the leaders of our church today and let them be lifted up, that you might be glorified through their, through their anointings, Father. Thank you for your love. We love you, Lord. I want to be what you'd have us to be and do what you would have us to do. Now be with us again, we ask. Thank you for everything that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Turn to page 126. And Laverne, I know you just prayed, but I'm going to give you a second to catch your breath. I wish you'd give God a word of testimony before we sing page 126. Well, uh, for a human to give God... Uh, all the meaning that he means to us and all of the favors that he gives to us and all we don't understand we don't really acknowledge God every day like we should we ought to wake up with God on our minds whenever the devil puts us to bed and gets us up in the morning our day doesn't go good but well I could ramble on for hours but I just want to thank God again for the salvation and for the joy that he brings Amen. Amen.
the ushers are coming this morning. Would you stand? We're going to receive our morning tithe and offering today. Sunday, November the 5th will be a special day in this church. And uh, in accordance with the bylaws, I just want to make sure that is going to be a special business meeting that morning. We'll have an affirmation vote again to call uh, Brother Jess Cole as our new pastor. Unless, of course, somebody crops up between now and then. I doubt that that's going to happen. Well, uh, Laverne asked the kids to sing a special song this morning. They're going to do that right now before Brother Lee comes. They brought the blind to Jesus' side. Touch me now, I pray. So Jesus led. experience that. I hope everybody has. I really do. Well, it's good to see you this morning. Good to be with you. Glad you're here. Glad you're going to heaven. You are, aren't you? How many have ever needed help from somebody else? Most of us have. How many have ever been in a situation where somebody needed your help. Many of us, most of us probably have been there as well. Did you help? Did you help? Luke chapter 10, if you will. Let's start reading at verse number 25. I'm going to look at a question this morning, and the question is this, who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Some of you have what we look at as neighbors today that live very close to you. Some of you, your nearest neighbors a little ways on down the road. Some of your neighbors perhaps wish you were a little further down the road. I don't know. What's a neighbor? Who's a neighbor? 
Do you remember that that question came before Jesus one day? A man asked him, who is my neighbor? You'd think, for goodness sakes, that we'd know who our neighbor is. But you know, the answer that Jesus gave was a little broader than we think of sometimes. Luke chapter 10, starting with verse number 25. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, that is, tempted Jesus, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What's written in the law? How readest thou? You're an attorney. What do you think it says? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and, and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. But he, that is the lawyer, willing to justify himself, said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now, Jesus is asking, which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And the lawyer said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, now notice, then said Jesus unto him, Go, and do thou likewise. Hmm. The lesson in this passage of Scripture is not so much about the man's misfortune as it is about how other people reacted to him. <laughs> now, notice, it was a bad thing that happened. They took his property... They took his money. They took his clothes, for goodness sakes. They, they took his property, and they injured him. He was gravely wounded, half dead, Jesus said. But you know, it does not have to be in a robbery, in an armed robbery, in a forcible robbery, that people do things like this. It, we, we can get other people's property dishonestly and we can injure other people we can to use an expression that we use quite a bit we can hurt somebody's feelings even in the house of God if we're not careful let's notice let's notice how some religious people reacted to another fellow's problems first a priest the priest knew the law. He was strictly educated in it. He was supposed to be a master of it. And he was supposed to teach the law to other people. A Jewish priest back in the day, what, well still, I suppose, is a descendant of Aaron, the brother of Moses. 
And back in the day, he served in the temple at Jerusalem. The priests had various duties to perform. They carried out responsibilities like offering sacrifices, blessing the people, teaching the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, maintaining the temple. But you couldn't be a priest without certain qualifications. And to become a priest, you had to be born into a priestly family and you had to undergo a certain ceremonial consecration. Priests were expected to follow certain rules of living, purity and holiness. And they had to avoid, somehow it seems strange to us, they had to avoid dead people's bodies. They couldn't come in contact with corpses. They, they had to marry only eligible women, women who were pure and, and qualified. They had to refrain from shaving their heads and their beards. The priests wore long hair and long beards and were, were standing out in appearance from the people around them. They were taught the Torah, those first five books. They were given instruction manuals based on the Jewish beliefs about the Torah, about the, their Bible. <laughs> they were taught how to officiate at religious and civil ceremonies, weddings and divorces and such things. They were taught how to judge between people who had disputes. They were taught how to treat people with illnesses and pray over them. And they administered the temple business and all kinds of things like that. Now, after the destruction by Rome of the second temple in about A.D. 70, they lost a lot of their function because there was no temple there anymore. And their role diminished a great deal. They couldn't do their main functions, and so the priestly group faded away, and the rabbis came and s sort of took over the thing. They, the rabbis are not necessarily descendants of Aaron. But they are scholars who have studied and made themselves so knowledgeable uh, in Jewish custom and law that they became the, the teachers. But let me get back to my subject. This man was a priest. He was born to it. He was trained in it. He was trained in the office. He was trained in the law of Israel. And, and thus he was a leader of the Jews by word and supposedly by example. And he had the authority to rule on religious matters and even to discipline the people that he came in contact, contact with, particularly the people around him. He could discipline them if they did not follow the law to the letter. <laughs> and he saw the injured man. The, the, this one who was so trained, who, was, who, was, uh, uh, who had a background in the law and what God said to do about everything, he saw the injured man and he realized his condition and he realized the need of the man that had been robbed but he turned and the scripture said he passed by on the other side. Friends, religion alone will not make us good. Now, religion is good. The proper religion is good. But we need more than that. It may enlighten us. It, 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 it may open our eyes so that we can see what's right and what's wrong. Uh, it it, it it may help us know what we should do, but knowing a thing and doing a thing are two different matters. And the priest just walked away from his duty. He went on his way. He left the man lying there in pain. Then next there came by a Levite. Well, this guy knew the law too. The Levites, you can tell by the name, the Levites were 
descendants of Levi, one of the twelve children of Israel. They were chosen by God to serve in the tabernacle in the wilderness and later in the temple in Jerusalem. They were taught to teach the people, to judge the people of Israel. They, they had a lot of duties in serving the people and God. They, they were to sing psalms in the services. They were to build and maintain the temple. They were guards and caretakers and gatekeepers. They offered sacrifices, animal sacrifices, and, and they burned incense on the altar. They blessed the people in the name of the Lord. They, they dedicated the most holy things to God. They, they received and they distributed the offerings that came into the temple. They set up the tabernacle in the wilderness and then they broke it down and packed it up and carried it to the next site. They even maintained cities of refuge for people who had accidentally committed manslaughter. They were the rest of the tribe of Levite that were not priests, and, and they assisted the priest in the duties that the priest carried out, and they received guidance and instruction from them on, on religious matters. So they were workers around the church, if you will. They were workers around the temple, and, and so they were helpers to the people and, and, and sort of a go-between between God and His people, Israel. Hmm. By birthright and by responsibility, they had a lot to do in God's house. And this particular Levite was curious also. Notice, he walked up to the injured fellow. He looked down on him where he lay. And he looked him over real good, it seems like. And he saw that the man was grievously wounded. He was curious, but he was not helpful. He turned his back on the fellow. And like the priest... He, too, walked away from his duty. A priest and a Levite, the leading religious people of the Jewish population in the day, both left the man where he was. Maybe saying, that's a shame. Somebody ought to catch those guys that did that and lock them up. Somebody ought to help that man that's lying there hurt in the ditch. But they walked away. But there was a third man. And let's look at him. He, he, he was the good man of the three. So let's look at him. But, but on the other hand, maybe we need to wait a little while. Maybe, maybe we don't want to look at him for... This man was not a priest, and he was not a Levite, and he was not even a Jew. And as a matter of fact, the Word tells us, Jesus spoke it, he was a Samaritan. He was a Samaritan. And the Jews and the Samaritans were enemies. And they both looked down on the other as being dogs and called them that sometimes. The Samaritans, the Samaritans were formed when the children of Israel were taken into captivity. And then the enemy brought in other peoples captive with the children of Israel. And they intermarried and became a race of their own. And we often say that you're either a Jew or a Gentile and there are way far more Gentiles. 
But the Samaritans were considered neither Jews nor Gentiles, but a mixture of the two. They had their version of the Old Testament, but just the first five books, the Pentateuch, the Torah. They had their version of the first five books, and they did not accept any other part of the Bible. And they worshipped in Samaria, which was between Galilee and Judea. And they had their own ideas about many things, and their worship was different and in a different place, Mount Gerizim, rather than Jerusalem. And they did not get along with the Jews, and the Jews did not get along with them. And the conflict continued to the time of Jesus. It started before, and it was con a conflict when Jesus told them. But while the Jews avoided and looked down on the Samaritans, let's think back to what Jesus did sometimes. He showed a new attitude of compassion toward these dogs, if you will. He passed through their towns instead of going around. The Jews, if they needed to go from north to south or south to north, would go around Samaria. Jesus went smack dab through it, even through the villages of Samaria. One day, he even spoke to a Samaritan woman at a well and talked to her about religion, the true religion. He revealed himself to her as the Messiah. He healed a Samaritan leper along with some Jewish lepers one day. And he told this parable of what we call the Good Samaritan to his Jewish listeners. He even, Jesus even sent his followers, his disciples, into villages of Samaria to tell the gospel to those people that the Jews looked on as dogs. And many believed and accepted and received the Holy Spirit. Jesus, you see, taught that God's love is for everybody. Everybody. <laughs> doesn't matter your ethnic background, doesn't matter your religious background, just anybody that needs our help, Jesus said, tell them, give them the good news. So, back to our story, the lawyer that was listening to Jesus' comments would not have considered at all that a Samaritan could be considered a good man. It just would not have entered his mind. But Jesus thought otherwise. For the Samaritan helped the injured man that the priest and the, the Levite had walked away from. He helped him. He dressed his wounds. He, he took him to a place of rest and recuperation and he paid his bills for goodness sakes that was not expected of him not by the Jews anyway not by the lawyer but the scriptures tell us that there were other times when Gentiles did some good things when Gentiles did some great things I'm thinking of Pharaoh's daughter. Remember what she did? Pharaoh's daughter rescued the baby Amos from his little ark that was floating in the Nile River where his mother had hid him. Floating in the Nile near the crocodiles evidently. 
the ark was found, the baby was found, he was crying. Pharaoh's daughter had compassion as the good Samaritan did on the injured man. She had compassion on the baby. She arranged for a Jewish mother to take care of that baby and raise him. And by the providence of God, that Jewish mother was Moses' own mother. You, you know the story. That was not a coincidence. That was not a coincidence. The Lord worked that out. She was not one of the Hebrew people, but she had compassion and showed kindness to them. The Philippian jailer in the New Testament helped Paul and Silas. They'd been beaten. They were in jail. He dressed their wounds. He took, he took the best care of them that he could. And he made it possible for Paul and Silas to go from Philippi to their next stop and to their next and to their next, spreading the gospel, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to those people who would not have heard had it not been revealed to Paul and Silas and even later to Peter that God's gospel was for them as well. Then there were the barbarians on the island of Melita. <laughs> you remember Paul and the crew were on the way on the ship to Rome. Paul was being sent to Rome as a prisoner. And the storm came on the sea and it continued day after day after day. And it was so cloudy and dark they couldn't see what was going on. And they all thought they were going to going to die there and Paul said we prayed for daylight they threw all the goods overboard they threw the tackling of the ship overboard <coughs> they had no way of controlling it even if the wind stopped they, they were just making it as light as they could but it crashed ashore anyway and broke up and they all were either thrown into or got into the water to try to get to shore on broken pieces of the ship. And when they got to the shore, it w they were wet and it was cold. So they built a fire. And Paul, helping gather wood, was snake bit. Remember that? Most of us would have given up and died right there. The barbarians on the island were kind to them. Barbarians, not just Gentiles, but backward folks, barbarians, were kind to them. So this good Samaritan, back to my story, this good Samaritan did an humble, humble service to somebody that needed it, the man who'd been robbed, the man who'd been grievously injured he did humble service to him Jesus said we all can do that because he said sometimes all you need to do is give him a cup of cold water <laughs> we're not to cause problems we're not to increase problems we're not like the skit I saw presented by a high school group from Pierce City who were getting ready for a football game with Sarkoxy. Came running through the gym. There's a fire, there's a fire, and he came running through a gym with a container of something, and they said, have you got water for the fire? He said, no, this is gasoline. We're not to add to the fire, we're to... Help calm it down. Not add to or cause problems, but help alleviate them. This good man <laughs> spent time. He spent his effort. He spent his money. He spent his provisions to help. A man he'd never seen, never heard of, didn't know a thing about except that he was in need. He did all that to help him 
although he was an outcast to him. And Jesus said what to the lawyer? Go, do thou likewise. Why would you bring this message, Lee? Don't know. Don't know. I'm talking to the kindest bunch of people I ever, ever had anything to do with. You love each other and you help each other. I guess you help each other because you love each other. Amen? But sometimes we may meet somebody out there that needs help and he's not one of our kind of people. What do you mean, preacher? You know what I mean. You know what I mean. And there are people out there who are needier than this guy who was robbed even of his clothing and his money and was beaten up half dead. There are people out there that are dying spiritually and don't know anything about the gospel and about the Lord Jesus Christ. And we may meet them one day lying in a ditch. <laughs> they may need our help. And there are those who are, I don't want to reveal too much about me. I want to talk about you, but <laughs> I don't want to reveal too much about me. But, but, you know, I have seen people that were so, I'm sorry, I'll just go ahead and say it, okay, that were so repulsive to me that I didn't even want to look at them or touch them or anything. What are you talking about, Lee? You know what I'm talking about. You do. They may need help from you. You see, those are some of the people that Christ died for. Who are the rest of the people he died for? We are. We're the rest of them. We're to give them that cup of cold water. We're to bind up their wounds. We're, we're, we're to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. We're to be the good Samaritan to those people who are so desperately in need. We, too, are supposed to go and do likewise. Would you stand with me while we have a verse of an invitation? Heavenly Father, we ask you to take the rest of the service. Lord, we don't even know what to say about an invitation. Uh, after this kind of a message, Lord, we, we don't know what the needs there may be, and we turn it over to you as we ought to do and must do all the time anyway. But we would ask you to speak to us, to our hearts, and prompt us to... Think what you'd have us think and decide what you'd have us decide. And if we want to come and pray at this altar, to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing the chorus again, please. God bless you. Give you a good afternoon. Remember our service tonight at 6. Come back. Let's meet together again. 
Brother Steve Ash, would you dismiss us in a word of prayer, please?